Hello and welcome back to Real World Magic, where we make your life a little bit more magical. My name is Neil Trigger, I'm going to be your host, and today we're going to make this wonderful magic light up mushroom display. Okay, so it should be fairly obvious by now that we're going to need to get our hands dirty with electronics. Let's start by laying out the tools. This is a holder for a soldering iron. Ordinarily, you'd have a sponge in the bottom there. So the soldering iron goes in there like that. Let's keep it nice and safe. You're going to need some solder. Now this big spool here can be decanted into there, no problem. You're also going to need a battery holder. This sort of thing would be absolutely fine, but in the video, I didn't use that. I used a box like this. The benefit is that then you can switch it on and off. The battery goes in there. Go to a woodland and pick up a suitable log. So you're going to need some LEDs. These ones all come in different voltages and make sure that you use the right resistance to make sure that the LED doesn't burn out, but also that it's not too dim. For my project, I used white ones, sanded down a little to make sure that the light is properly diffused. And I had to use a 330 ohm resistor, which looks like this. These LEDs, admittedly this one's a red one, but I'm doing it for demonstration come with two pins. If yours have more than that, it's not going to be covered in this video. You're also going to need some heat shrink tubing. This is for insulation. If you don't have it, you can always use insulation tape. In order to use heat shrink tubing, you're also going to need a heat gun. If you're going to use a hair dryer, you can, but it'll take a bit longer. You're also going to need some offcuts of wire. I had these from another project. This little dude is called a helping hand. It's really handy because you've got these crocodile clips that can clip things on either end. And then once you've clipped them in position, you use the magnifying glass there to see what you're doing. The last things we're going to need, random I know, is a bowl of water, an ice cream scoop, and a hot glue gun. Guys, let's do it. Let's do this. Okay, so we start out by tinning the soldering iron. You use the solder to add a little bit of solder onto the tip and then you wipe it immediately off and it should go a bit shiny. You do the same to the wires, the positive and the negative, and you use the positive pin here, which is the longest pin. You trim the resistor a little bit short because you don't need all that wire and then you solder the resistor onto the positive arm, that's the longest leg of the LED. You then put a bit more wire on just to make it a bit easier and then you use heat shrink tubing like this and slide it down onto one of the pins. It doesn't really matter which one as long as they don't connect because otherwise it'll short out. Here you've got the guard to make sure that the uh, heat gun doesn't damage the surface and you just blow a bit of heat to shrink it. Then twist these two, the positive and negative, around each other to form the stem of what's going to be the mushroom. Now using the hot glue gun you just pour that into the ice cream scoop and this is going to form the cap of the mushroom. Quench it in some water and wait till it's cool. When it's cool, pop it out and that's the cap of your mushroom, done. So just now that you've got the stalk and the cap, put some hot glue on the LED itself and glue the mushroom cap on. Drill a hole into the wood itself and then stick that mushroom through. Now, what I've got here are two mushrooms that all need to be wired together. Ordinarily, you do that through the wood itself, but for our demonstration purposes, you won't see what's going on if we do that. Now, these need to be wired in parallel rather than in series. If you do it in series, what happens is that one of the mushrooms takes all of the juice, and then whatever's left over after it goes through goes into the second mushroom. You're not going to want that because the first mushroom will always have more power than the second, and the second mushroom will then be a bit dimmer. If you were to wire it in series, what would happen is that the power would go from the positive of the battery through the positive pin, out of the negative pin of the first mushroom, and into the positive pin of the second. You don't want to do that. What we need to do is to wire the positive and the positive of both mushrooms together, and then put them both together with the positive pin of the battery connector. That's what I'm doing here. Soldering the positive to the positive with a bit of solder, just like this. Now you'll see on the left, there are two positives of the mushroom being wired onto the positive of the battery connector. Similarly with the negative connection, just twist those two together and then both of those two get connected onto the negative pin of the battery connector. Use a bit of solder, just like before. So once you finish soldering it all together, you'll have a light that looks like this. Obviously the wood's going to be there as well though. Now in order to really finish this off, you might want to paint the stems. I did with mine, and what it does is cover all of the positive and negative colouring of the wires. Now I know that 
at the back it kind of looks a bit messy and that's fine because you're not going to see it anyway you use some hot glue and you wire everything in parallel this can be quite fiddly if you've got more than two mushrooms just to warn you the battery box there is also hot glued in just to make sure it's completely stiff and all of the mushrooms have a bit of a dab of hot glue at the back too when it's lit up it looks like this so thanks very much for watching guys if you would like this video please give it a big thumbs up subscribe for more of this sort of stuff click the bell to get notified of any new videos and i'll see you again next time